All right, hey, hey, everybody. All right, so this video is just gonna be a live run-through of setting up my trellis. So I'm gonna show you guys all the little details. And if you're watching later on, and there's parts of slowness, just go ahead and skip through that. So, and also if you're looking for a really detailed explanation of how to build a trellis like this, go ahead and look at the links down in the description. And I've got links to all my different videos about this lower and lean trellis, how to build it, the different parts that you're gonna need, all those different things. And, um, and uh, if you guys are watching and you wanna ask a specific question, you could put that in the comments. You guys could super chat me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, what else? Also, I'll mention this a few times throughout the stream, but I do a uh, live stream once a month with all my patrons on Patreon, and you can join for as little as $1 a month. And my next live stream will be next Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And that's just where I uh, hang out with my patrons, answer any questions that you guys have about anything in particular, whether it's my garden, the business, YouTube, anything that you want to know about. So check out Patreon for that. All right, so let's get into this trellis, and let me just give you a quick tour of it, tour of it, and how it works, and then I'll show you how I'm setting it up. So, so far here, I'm on my last bed. This is the bed that we'll be building together. I already drove the stakes into the ground because I needed help to do that. So let's take a look and see what we got going on here. So you'll see that I have these two by fours into the ground. The top line here, this is made from aircraft line. It's extremely strong, it can hold thousands of pounds. And the idea behind this trellis is to be able to grow tomatoes up high. And then when they get to the top of the trellis, rather than uh, putting out a bunch of suckers and going wide, what we're doing is we're training them to a single stem. And the single stem uh, is the only part of the plant that's putting off fruit. When the plant gets to the top of the trellis, we are, we are gonna lower it down. And these tomahooks here, these are called tomahooks, and these uh, are used in greenhouses. They're used, um, there's two types. It's either the tomahooks or these rollers. I really like the tomahooks, they're a little bit cheaper, pretty easy to use. And on this string here, do a looser one. So you can take this off and then unwind this. So when the tomato gets to the very top of this trellis, I'm gonna unwind it, lower the tomato down, and you do that to all the tomatoes at one time, and then you lean them. So this one in this position will move forward to the next position where this tomato is right now. And over time, as the trellis system goes on, you're basically wrapping the tomatoes like a big carousel around this thing and you can have 20, 30 foot tall plants, but instead of needing a, a 20 foot tall trellis, they're just going round and round. So that's kind of the basic idea behind a lower and lean trellis. And this is a technique that's typically done in greenhouses. But since I'm in San Diego, we have a really long growing season. So I don't necessarily need a caterpillar tunnel or, or things like that. And I can basically grow these tomatoes till December, as long as they stay healthy. Um, so let me show you. So I have really in-depth videos about how to build this. So the other thing, I'm going to show you guys how I connect it all. These are the clamps that I use to connect to the aircraft line. I put in extra supports here by putting rebar into the ground. Here's my cucumbers on this side. There they are. So, okay. Yeah, check out the tomatoes, guys. It's pretty fun. They're all looking real healthy. Just put them in a couple days ago and just beginning to train them. Okay, so let's get into building this thing now. So I, I just went ahead and put the posts in because I needed my wife's help for that and she doesn't like to be on camera. So here is what we got going. So these are two by fours with two by fours chopped off on the top here, about two foot wide. On the top, I put nails, and the nails are just to help guide this wire. So my next step for this trellis is to put on this wire. Oh, for the posts, I, I basically I put in a 
four inch spike. So I just used a, a saw and put a nice spike in there so they could penetrate the ground really well. And you can see that all that on my videos. The links are in the description. We've got about five different videos all about this trellis, planting tomatoes and, and training them, pruning them. So, all right. It's gonna be tricky to do live, but here we go. So my next thing I gotta do, I gotta get this wire on, on the uh, trellis here. And there is a couple ways that I could attach this. And in my videos, you can see the few different ways and techniques that I tried attaching it. They basically all work. So if you have the space, which I do not, the best way would be to run the wire on top and then down to a, like a guideline down the bottom, you could tie it to a rebar. But I don't have the space. So the method I, I found out that works really well last season is to just wrap it around like this really tightly and then use a clamp on there and then you can reinforce it by putting a little guideline down here. Um, unfortunately, I can't make a big angle because of my room. You can also put a stake in front of the two by four and that's something I found works really well. I'll show you. So do you see how I put that stake right there? It's about a two foot stake down to the ground. That way it prevents this from leaning forward too much. But what's cool about this trellis is it can hold all the weight and it's fine. These are, these beds right here are basically 30, they're 35 feet long. I've got four posts. The middle towers there, they hold a lot of that vertical weight. So the weight isn't a big issue. Okay, so let's go ahead and attach this wire here so here's the little clamps that i use there's two different styles of clamps that you can use on this aircraft line these are the best because they're removable the other type you have to crimp onto the wire i don't recommend that <laughs> hey what's up john what's up ken um so now i need to attach this and you, it's definitely easier to build this with another person, for sure. My buddy Eric helped me out the other day. It was, it was awesome. And I'm just going to use my drill here to make this easier on myself. So I'm going to attach this. So besides showing you guys the setting up the lines, I'll show you how I set up um, my spacing on my tomatoes. I space my tomatoes uh, one foot apart and then I offset them to give it maximum space and light. I'm also going to show you how I make my special fertilizer mix for this setup. Yeah, I should have. And then we'll see what time it is. but. I'll try to plant them tonight too. If not, maybe I'll do another live session in the morning. Okay. So you got to put it through two pieces of the wire. Mm. And yeah, it's not easy to do this by yourself, but you can do it. And if you guys want to answer any question or ask any questions while I'm screwing around here, I'll try to answer them as I go. Okay, we got one wire set. Let's get the other one on.
Oh, hey, Dragstep, what's up, dude? Yeah, thanks. It was a really cool video with Curtis. I was, ha I watched it too. I was pretty happy with it. It was really cool to meet Curtis Stone and, and hang out with him and talk about all sorts of crazy stuff. Okay. So one more wire, we'll drag it across there. And then I'll show you how I connect it to the other side, which will be a little different. Then I'll be measuring out my tomatoes, my spacing, getting the hole set up. Um, so this trellis for wind. Now I'm in a very urban area. There's houses all around me. So, you know, I'm not getting gusts of like 30 or 40 miles an hour and higher. So I have not tried it in that situation. I, I would worry about my tomatoes or cucumbers though in that in a gust sort of situation, which is why a lot of people will do these um, in greenhouse or they'll do them in like a caterpillar tunnel. But as far as the trellis itself, the trellis isn't going anywhere. The trellis is not going to fall down. Some people, you know, I've seen, so I got this idea online from some other people, but then I modified it because I tried to make it, basically I tried to make this as cheap and as little work as possible. And I experimented with it last year at a few different styles of this. And basically it worked. So I'm kind of, there's much, there's a much stronger way to set this up. You could use turnbuckles and you could use different things to make this a lot stronger. You could cement these posts into the ground if you want. Um, but you know, I need this to be removable because I'm constantly changing my crops. We'll also talk uh, interplanting as well. As soon as I get this put on. So, okay, almost done here. Okay, so now we can run these lines across. Here we go. So if you guys wanna see the in-depth build, I've got links in the description to see if you guys wanna see my actual videos all about this. I just did this to show you guys live and to hang out and stuff. Okay, here we go. Cool, so next step is to attach it to the other side to some rebar. And so that's gonna be a little bit different setup. Okay. And if you guys like live streams and stuff, I do one live stream a month with my patrons on Patreon. And you can join my Patreon group for as little as a dollar a month. 
My next live stream will be next Saturday at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I answer any questions that anybody has, and we just hang out. All right. Sorry about the sun, guys. I'm trying to minimize that for you. Okay. So I'll run to wrap it up and down. I'm not going to loop it here because... Well, I've done it both ways. I've looped it before and then run the line down. That's that's fine. Um, and then use a guideline. But for this one, I'm just going to run it straight down to some rebar. So I'm going to zoom in down here. And actually, you know, I think I need another piece of rebar. I'm out. So I'll show you how to take a re piece of rebar out of the ground, <laughs> which isn't very fun. So here's my rebar from this other one, but I didn't really use it. Actually, this one I can just pull out. But if you hit it and wiggle it a bunch, it's pretty easy to pull a piece of rebar out. There it is. Okay, cool. Easy. So let's pound this other one in. And I want to have it lined up with the wire where my trellis is going to go as well as I can. <clears throat> tomatoes they take a it depends if you're using heat mats or germination chamber but you know two should be two weeks max for those seeds to sprout and then i grew mine for i don't know i got mine really tall mine are like two feet tall i probably grew them for almost eight weeks or less maybe a little less Okay, so I'll pound it in most of the way, and then I need to have it to have angle on it so that when I wrap this around it, it'll hold tight to it. There's probably a better way to do this, but this is what I found that works. <clears throat> so I'm going to bend it. This. Hmm. This ground's pretty soft here. I'm gonna go this way. Yeah, that should work. Okay. So now I'm gonna pull this wire tight. I'm going to take these nuts off real quick. I've got tons of info down in the video description if you want to learn more about what I'm doing and how to set up a trellis like this. Okay, so here we go. So let's, um, let me get it fairly tight here. Okay. <laughs> Wish I had one of you guys here to help me. Okay, so this one. Hopefully it'll hold well. So 
So before I fully tighten this, I'm gonna pull as much slack out as I can. Nice. So check this out. Okay, so it's connected there. Goes up. Rests on the top of the wood. And then the line goes down all the way to the other side. It has pretty darn good tension. Pretty happy with that. Nice. And that's it. So now let's just do the other side. Tent pegs, yeah, that's a good idea. If it's, uh, yeah, I think that could work pretty well. That's a great idea. This is why, that's why I love YouTube. You guys give me so many good ideas. Cool, okay, so. Make sure I'm showing you guys the, what I'm doing. Ugh. Well, should be good enough to work. Uh, let's just do the same thing. We'll get a lot of tension in this line, but not so much that I'm making the uh, wood post bend forward a bunch. Don't want to do that. Okay. Right there's pretty good. So now, loop this thing. And try to hold this tension in the line with one hand here. And if I lose some of the tension, I can just fix that when I fully sink the uh, nuts in. <sighs> if I miss some of your questions, um, if you super chat me, that's a guaranteed way that I'll answer your question. I just can't keep up with the, all the questions while I'm building this. Okay. So now, let's see. All right, so I'm gonna pull this tension out. much as it wants to go here. So after this step, I'll show you guys how I'm gonna mark out my tomatoes for planting. This should be tighter, I just can't get it off. Yeah, see that's too loose, it's just gonna fly, it could fly off. All right, let me fix it. Better to fix a problem Sooner rather than later. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. That's what I need.
All right, now that's tight. Okay, we're done. So the lines are done. <clears throat> so here's what we got now, guys. Two lines, lots of tension. And let's go check out the other side, make sure I didn't pull it too hard. Oh, well, I'm gonna show you guys one more step I like. I'm liking to do right now. Yeah, it didn't get too much lean in it. So I'm gonna show you one more thing I'm gonna do. This is a pretty good way to reinforce the two by four cheaply. And I, cause I don't have room to put in big guidelines here. So let's see here, let me find the post. So I just have a uh, two foot stake here and I'm going to pound this in right in front. And I'm going to push against this. Take some of the tension out or make it tighter basically. I can fit it nicely. There, so now if a lot of tension is pulling the uh, large two by four here this way, this stake will help to prevent that really easily. Okay, cool, so that's the hardest part done. Whew, okay, so, so now check out my tomatoes here. So these are spaced one foot apart. So from this tomato to there, that's one foot. Now you're noticing that they're also offset and that's going to allow the sunlight to penetrate in here and also the wind as well. So let me show you. Here, let me put you guys on the other side and then... <laughs> so what I'm going to use is a 100 foot measuring tape. I'm gonna use 100 foot measuring tape. Mark my spaces every foot with a hoe, just as an extra precaution in case I bump the tape. I also put bricks on the tape to make sure I'm not moving it. So let's set that up. I'm going to pull my tape really tight and straight. That's the other point of the brick. Okay. So now that my tape is set out, it's super easy. I just every, every foot and it's even marked in red for me. Really easy. Uh, try to answer a couple questions for you guys. I don't know what a wire strainer is. Oh yeah, ratchets. Yeah, all that stuff. You could you could use that, but like I said, I tried to make this as cheap as possible. You don't need the ratchets. You don't need turnbuckles. You don't need any of that. As far as what you know, I'm doing like 40 tomatoes on a row, each of these rows. So, and I last year I grew plants that were 15 to 20 feet. Okay, let me get my hoe. I'm just gonna hoe where these um, holes will go. And then I will dig the holes, but I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to set up my fertilizer mix. So if you guys want to know about, um, you know, making a real nice homemade fertilizer mix, using a couple 
bought amendments. I'm going to show you how I do that. And then I'll dig the holes after that. That's going to take a little while. Um, so I'll show you. I don't want to make you guys wait. So let me do this real quick. So, put my first tomato here. I want to make sure to space these as wide as I can in the bed. Now that spot, that uh, part's not super necessary, but I like to do it because I have kicked my tape before, something like that, and then I lose all the measurements. And you need it to be really equidistant for this because I am stacking them so close. A foot apart is really close. So, and most people are gonna do 18 inches or more um, in a normal system, but in the greenhouses, or if you watch Never Sink Farm, or any of the super high profit market garden people, they're usually doing a spacing. So I dig my holes with a trenching shovel like this. This is a three inch trenching shovel. So I can make the holes as small as possible. And we can take here, let's take a look at my tomatoes, I guess, real quick. Um, here they are. So what are these? These are, um, these are yellow pear tomatoes. I already pre-pruned them up. So look how tall they are. This is a really nice start. This is like, this is ideal really. Cause what you want to do is plant your tomatoes deeper into the ground. And actually I'm going to pull this off as well. Cause I'm going to try to bury these up to this first uh, leaf here. And when you do that, this entire stem will develop root structure. So it's a way to kind of speed up having the plant having a gigantic root structure. So uh, I always recommend planting your tomatoes as deep as you possibly can uh, for that benefit. So, you know, they have better root structure means they can get water and nutrients more easily. There's a little sucker I forgot to get. So I'm pre pruning all the suckers out, taking off a lot of the sun leaves and then it's ready to go for me. So now Let's go check out how I'm going to do my fertilizer mix. Okay. Check out TGAC. I don't know what that is. Those starts, I don't know, I feel like eight weeks old or something like that, maybe a little less. <laughs> Okay, so over here, this is one of my compost areas. This is a bunch of composted horse manure, actually, I got from one of my customers. So that's going to be the base that you're going to use for your fertilizer mix is compost. And then we're going to blend in some fertilizer and, and minerals and some something extra special that I'll tell you about as well. Um, but before we do that, just check this out. I'm, I'm stoked on this. I planted these like a year and a half, almost two years ago. These are artichokes. And check it out. Finally got some going. So it's pretty fun. I this is my neighbor's yard that they let me do stuff in. So I just experiment back here. I just did a recent video. One of my recent ones is all about how to set up grow bags with drip irrigation. And you can guys can check that out. Or if you guys have seen my episode on um, soil block versus wind strip versus 
plug tray. I tested out all those seed propagation methods. And then here's my little test zone where I planted them all. So here's a little sneak preview of an upcoming episode I'm gonna make all about which ones did the best. And everything's doing really well back here. So I got peppers and kale and lettuce and some herbs and stuff. So let's go make that fertilizer mix for my tomatoes. So obviously I'm gonna be using compost. But here's a few other things that I like to use. And I put some links down in the description if you'd like to pick, pick some of these things up. These are things I add into my seedling mix as well. This is just uh, kelp meal from Dr. Earth. They also add in mycorrhizae uh, fungi in there. Well, it's not a fungi, but yeah. So kelp meal's excellent. It's got um, 50, 60 different minerals. Uh, soil biology can create a lot of really good chemicals with this stuff. Um, this is azomite rock dust has 70 different trace minerals and not all the trace minerals are for the plants actually a lot of these trace minerals are for the soil biology they break it down make it available to the plant or they convert it into other things so it helps just create healthier soil in general but your plants will also absorb some of it as well um, this is just a this is called roots organic bloom fertilizer it's a 364, so high in phosphate, which is great for flowers and fruit, which is what we're doing today. So I'll add some of that. And then this is biochar. This is my special thing that I'm adding in. And biochar is charcoal. It's charcoal that's been inoculated with beneficial fungi, bacteria, nutrients, and it's amazing. It can hold. So basically in a piece that's this big, about a gram, um, it's basically a football field worth of square footage because there's so much pore space in this. So it's pretty interesting stuff, mixing it all in. And uh, so let me show you. So first I just need to fill up my wheelbarrow with compost. Nice, biochar is really cool. I'm taking out these like twigs. I don't want that. Okay, almost done. A little bit more. Okay, that'll be enough for one bed for sure. So here we go. So I like mixing this stuff kind of thing up with a uh, pitchfork. So for adding in my amendments, I, you know, I, I measure, but not too crazily. <laughs> Enjoy those chips and soda, man. 
All right, so. So the biochar, I'm just gonna put like 1%. I'll just put a few handfuls. You Basically from the different studies and stuff I've seen, you know, 5% seems like the, the best amount, like 10% max. I inoculated it with worm tea and really good compost. And I aerated that for like 10 days. I'm gonna put in about a cup or so of kelp meal, like two cups maybe. And fruiting crops are super sensitive to minerals. They All plants need their minerals just like we do, but Tomatoes and peppers and squash are extra sensitive to it. They really need it. So I'll do two cups of azomite. And oh. And I'll do a full two cups of this fertilizer. Cool. So now with my little homemade fertilizer mix, um, I top dressed with this and I also put some of it in the planting hole and I'll demonstrate that later. I'll be doing a live stream next Saturday at 10 a.m. where you can ask me any questions about anything in the garden or farm or YouTube, whatever you wanna know. And you can join that by signing up on Patreon. I got a link in the description. And I like mixing this right on top of the pile. So if anything jumps out, it just goes back in the pile and I'll eventually get it. And the pitchfork makes it nice you can kind of shake it and it helps blend it together and it's less weight. It's important to blend this really well so that each tomato will get the same amount of fertilizer and all the good stuff here. Okay. Okay, pretty good. Cool. So, now I'm at the point of digging holes. <sighs> so, Unfortunately, there's no way to speed this up. Normally, I would just time lapse this in one of my videos. Um, we're doing pretty good on time, so I'm just going to keep it streaming. I don't know, give me 20, 30 minutes to dig these holes. And then I'll be back and I'll show you how I'm going to plant all these tomatoes. I'm adding the fertilizer and all that stuff. I will uh, 
I'll occasionally come back to the camera and answer any questions that you guys have though. <clears throat> so I'll just show you how, to, how I'm gonna dig the hole, I guess, and how deep it's gonna be. So, love having a small trenching shovel. I try to just make two, uh, Make two cuts, and then I can kind of pull that chunk out pretty easily. I'm trying to disturb the bed as little as possible, but what can you do? And it's pretty fun to see how good my soil is now after almost three years out here. There's hardly any rocks even deeper down. There's still a decent amount of clay down there, but overall, pretty happy. I always see a couple of earthworms in every hole too. So that's always nice to see. So something like that. It's about a foot and a half. And then what I can do is test it with my tomato in there. So actually I went a little bit too deep. So you want the, uh, the top soil level should be even with like maybe an inch or so below the first stem. So that way you're preventing any soil from getting on the leaves. You don't want any pathogens that are possibly in the soil or fungus, things like that, to jump onto the plant. So just a preventative measure. You can get some soil on your plant and it'll be fine, but you just want to take extra precaution with your babies. So I'll put a little bit more soil in. Test it again. Okay, somewhere about there is good because I'm going to be throwing in a big handful of my fertilizer compost mix, which is going to raise it up slightly more. And the reason I'm going to put the fertilizer in the hole is so that the plant has access to these nutrients right away. I'll also top dress on the top and let water infiltrate those nutrients down as well. And I've just found that it's really beneficial for the plants. I've done it many years now and I really like it and a lot of other professional farmers do it this way too. This isn't something you should do for a tree or a permanent crop, but for a annual crop, I think that it is beneficial. So here we go. I'm gonna see if there's any questions and then time to dig. <sighs> cool. Well, thanks for tuning in guys. And I'll come back every few minutes to look at the uh, text here. All right, here we go. Check out my video description if you'd like to um, see the actual videos I made all about building this trellis, all about planting tomatoes, all about pruning them, training them, everything that you'd want to know to set up a system like this, or if, even if you're doing a different style tomato system. Maybe you guys could watch that while you're waiting for me. Okay. Oh no.
<sighs> Taking holes is fun, isn't it? <laughs> Man. Okay. I'm gonna set you guys up over here. <sighs> hey, kitty. It's part of my uh, pest control. Good night, John. See you guys later. All right. Yeah, just give me some time, guys. I'll get this done. Okay.
Okay, it's on. You just tuned in, I'm digging all these holes, and then I'll be back to talk to you guys more and explain how I'm gonna plant these tomatoes. Those roots from that tree. Gee, a lot. Big tree root right here. That's a big root. Well, oh well, just has to go on top of it. It's hmm. a nightmare, okay. All right, one more hole on this side and then I just got one more side to do. Oh, man. Oh. How big will I grow my, grow my farm? Before BCS, this is as big as I plan on making my farm. My wife and I want to buy land outside of California, hopefully in another year, year and a half, if we can make it happen. Um, yeah, half acre or more, you could justify getting a BCS for sure. I'd love to have one. Yeah, you can plant the tomatoes horizontal too, yeah. I mean, I'm planting them deep, it's the same effect.
Sure you guys are getting sick of this. Here, check out the rest of the what the farm looks like right now. Yeah, it'd be cool to be on Twitch. I don't know how to set it up though for like simultaneous streams and stuff.
All right, done. Whew. Okay. <sighs> How long did that take? 30 minutes? Yeah, something like that. A little more. All right, so, oh yeah, check out the holes. Here we go. So I always toss my dirt to the same side every time. So when I dug the hole, I put it to the left, put it to the left. And that just helped me to prevent throwing dirt into uh, getting, like pushing the dirt back into the hole. There we go. Not too bad, a little bit of work. So now I'm gonna go grab my fertilizer mix that we made earlier and throw a little bit in the holes. Then we'll set up the tomatoes and then we'll start planting. Whew, I'm gonna throw some gloves on. Let me see if you guys said anything. Oh, thank you, Drag Strip. Sorry, I don't know your first name, but thanks, bro. I'll uh, check out the message. Appreciate it. Okay, so next I'm going to lay out all my tomatoes and I'm doing this in all these different steps so that I'm doing the least amount of work and saving myself time. Let's get this tape out of here. Okay, where's my... So this is kind of my leftover bed. So I'll be planting my leftover tomatoes that I had. So I'm gonna be planting, it's called uh, Edox, which is a, it's a type of tomato that like, you're supposed to harvest it and then you let it ripen on the vine or you can, it ripens in at the same time so you can cut the vine and then sell the whole vine with all the tomatoes on it. So it was just something fun this year that I wanted to try out. And I'll be planting yellow pears and then maybe finish up with my black cherries. The rest of the beds though, I did all one variety the whole time. Um, but I just don't have enough to, to do it all one variety right now.
Let's see if I have some more yellow pears. Okay, a couple spots left, we'll just throw some black cherries in there. All right, finally ready to plant. So next step here. So now I've got them all in. So you can see they're ready to go for me. And now so I've got all my stuff ready. I've got my fertilizer mix next to me. Now I'm gonna be interplanting this bed and I think we'll have enough light that I can show you guys how I'm gonna do that. I plan on uh, direct seeding some radishes on the sides. And then I might do some sort of brassica uh, green on the inside like arugula or kale baby kale that I could harvest by hand and Interplanting is a way that you can really boost the amount of food that you're growing if you're selling this stuff Then obviously the profit per bed is going to be way better uh, So interplanting your tomatoes is key. You can interplant uh, radish beets uh, mixes lettuce uh, Anything that's really short growing. I think you could probably do chard and kale even um, but it gets pretty hot here in San Diego, so it's kind of not probably possible. But I don't know, I haven't experimented with it. Um, what else? Okay, here we go. Oh, and usually, if I wasn't going to interplant, I'd already have my trellis layer up, or my trellis string, so that after I plant, I could just immediately attach the trellis string, wrap it, and then uh, plant. <laughs> when do you, when do you uh, plant your tomatoes, Homestead Odyssey? How long do you have to wait? Whoa. I'm actually late, and for San Diego, I could have planted these like three, four weeks ago, I think. At least where I'm at in San Diego. Mid-June, oh my, you must be super north. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, what does it say? Would you farm outside the USA? Um. Probably not. <laughs> okay. So for planting this, guys, here we go. So I already put my fertilizer in the hole. I'm going to double check. This actually looks like I should add a little bit more soil in to get a better height because we've got a fruiting cluster here. Gosh, sorry. And I don't want that to be touching the soil. So I'm going to massage the pot. I like to grab sorry I like to grab here between my two fingers to help support when the pot comes out then i'm gonna just lightly rough the outside to get the roots loose put the plants in and then i'm gonna hold the stem as i shake some of this outer soil in 
kind of annoying. I've got big chunks of clay at the bottom of the soil, so it's, I'm trying to break it up a little bit as I put it in. And then I'll just compress a little bit. Pull in some of the soil around, compress again. And I'm compressing to remove any air pockets lower down. Because if roots hit a large air pocket, they're gonna actually die. Okay, nice. That's in. And let's, I'm gonna add two big handfuls of my fertilizer mix and I'll just top dress that by spreading it around the outside. And that's it, one tomato done. Um, I'm gonna lower my tripod, sorry for the shakiness, but I think it'll be better if I lower this. Cool. So now let's also show you the depth here. I don't know if you guys can see, but so I'm trying to keep it a little bit off the ground so this leaf or the fruiting cluster isn't touching the soil, just as a precaution to, so no disease is jumping up onto the plant. Okay, let's go to the next one. Cool. I'm going to do another, if you guys have more questions and stuff, um, you could join my Patreon. You can join for just a dollar. And I'm going to do another live stream next week on Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And you can ask me any question about anything that you want to learn about with gardening or small-scale farming. Or if I don't know the answer, I can put you in the right direction. And I got a link in the description to my Patreon. And that's something I do every month with my Patreon, patrons on the website. Okay, looking good. You can, you'll notice that I already removed all the suckers because I'm training these to a single liter. And if you guys are familiar with uh, Ben Hartman, he does the same type of technique, but he does a double liter, which is pretty cool. And Ben Hartman wrote the farming book, The Lean Farm. And he's an amazing market gardener. Okay, top dressed, done. And then I'm just gonna keep moving here. And if there's any questions, I'll answer them right now. If not, I'm just gonna keep planting. Then the next step will be mycorrhizae. Yeah, so one of the amendments I put in was the Dr. Earth kelp. And that has mycorrhizae in it. Um, but I would like to experiment more with mycorrhizae and dump more of that into my holes. I just don't have any currently. So here we go. I'm going to keep planting and try to get this done quickly so I can move on and show you guys interplanting with my direct seeder. And then you can, of course, interplant with transplants as well. I will be transplanting basil in between uh, my other tomatoes. But this, this bed hasn't had a brassica in a long time, so that's why I'm going to put the radishes here. And I still have three other beds that I can put basil in. Oof. Okay. I'll come back to the camera to answer questions as I go, if you guys come up with any.
Oof. Gotta get more fertilizer. Great white. Oh yeah, that stuff. I've, I've seen that before. I've heard it's really good. Yeah, extreme gardening. Yeah, it's something I'll play around with. I just got... I've got so much other good nutri nutrients I'm putting in there and... I don't know. Only so much time. <laughs> Okay. Yeesh. So see this tomato, guys? See how it's all, oops, stupid camera. See how that's all curling and it looks all crappy? There's something wrong with this tomato. I don't know what it is, but I shouldn't plant it. So I'm gonna pick a different one. Definitely wanna pick the healthiest, most vigorous looking plants, and this is definitely not that. Huh. Well, hopefully it works out.
<sighs> so once I, um, I'm gonna make a, a really nice compost worm tea mixed with some Korean natural farming stuff for all these plants here in the next week. Spray them all foliarly. And then these should just absolutely explode and take off. Oops, too much. If you want to learn how to prune a tomato, I've got a great video. I've got a link in the description to it. You can see exactly how to prune up a tomato, learn how to prune off suckers, and I'll give you guys really good tips on how to guarantee that you understand what a sucker is and how to remove, um, you know, identify it. If you'd like to support more streams like this, uh, you could join me on Patreon or donate through PayPal. And really appreciate it. I'd like to do more of these live streams a couple of months in the future. Okay, as long as people find it valuable. Oh no, my battery. Okay, we're almost halfway done here. And then we'll move on to interplanting with a direct seeder. It sucks because there's so much clay in the lower part of my soil. A lot of the, the top, like six to eight inches has been converted, but a little bit lower and it's still super clay. So it's kind of tricky. I don't want to dump a bunch of the clay into the hole. I'm trying to put some of this better dirt, or I should say soil, not dirt. Do you guys know the difference between dirt and soil? So dirt is not alive, it doesn't have biology in it. And soil, it actually has the biology, it's living, it's alive. And without that biology, your plants will not really grow unless you're dumping chemical fertilizers. Okay. Let's put you guys here.
Do you guys know who uh, Michael Kilpatrick is? He's the person, if you've ever seen the uh, wash solid mach uh, washing machine salad spinners, he's the guy who kind of came up with that and really innovated the post-harvest station. He um, He's going to be in San Diego this week, and he's going to come over to my house tomorrow to the farm, and we're going to shoot, I'm going to shoot an interview with him. I think he's going to do a Facebook video or something with me for his channel. So it should be pretty cool. I'm excited to meet him. So stay tuned for a future uh, interview with Michael. Well, I'm really happy with the health of my tomatoes. They, um, they turned out really good. And I've been, um, this is my first season with Korean, first summer with Korean natural farming. So I'm really excited to use my water soluble calcium and phosphate and um, some of my other KNF nutrients I've been making. What up, Luz? Okay. Almost, so we're like halfway done right here. How tall do I usually grow your tomatoes? Um, last year they got to 15 to 20 feet. My cucumbers got almost like, I think it was 20 feet, almost all of them. And that's because of the lower and lean. And um, so I forgot when I pulled them out of the ground, they were deep into the season. I could have gone deeper though. I just, they didn't stay healthy enough near the end. So, hoping that this year I can, I'll try to do a better job and keep them healthier. They made it to like September, October, I think October, I think. <laughs> okay. Then I jump to the other side. You guys see my dragon fruit? Actually, you know what killed my plants last year is I should have used a like 20% shade cloth. I haven't used shade cloth on, on my fruiting crops before, but that's what my buddy recommended. Um, seeds of Xanadu, I think that's how he spells his name. Justin Gay, he's got a really good YouTube channel. He's another market gardener. But I think if I use a 20% shade, that way when it gets up to 100 degrees, they uh, maybe that's the key and I should try shade cloth this year.
<sighs> All right. So things are looking good. Just got a little bit more to do. Still got more sunlight to go. <laughs> Game of Thrones. New episode this weekend. Who's re who's excited? <laughs> Actually, this next episode is going to be ridiculous. All right. What do we got here? It's so hard to do. Something like that.
Thank you. Two more. I think I saw you say something about air printing. I, yeah, you know, I'd love to, um, oh, I, I, I start my tomatoes and, and most of my crops in soil blocks. And I'd love some pots or something that I can size up to that air, you know, continues the air pruning. Um, I just haven't found that product yet. I don't really want to make four inch soil blocks, so. I don't know if you have a recommendation or not. But I try to like time it so that they don't get too root bound before I start, before I plant them. I was a little bit, this is my last bed. I planted the other ones a few days ago. So. Okay, that's it. In the ground, cool. All right. Check it out. Turned out pretty good. Cool, so now I just need to clean up the edges here and do that with a rake. I need to get these pots out of the way. 
and then I'll bring in my cedar and I'm going to do uh, all brassica family here. Whew, thanks for watching everybody. Glad you like it enough to keep watching. <laughs> Better take care of that back. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm not I'm not doing very good ergonomics right now. I feel ya. But it's hard because I'm like trapped in between this fence and I got a tree in here and it's I only got eight inch pathways. All right, let me clean this up and then we'll do the next step of interplanting.
Okay, that's good enough. So I'm gonna get my cedar and get my, uh, what are they? I wanna get my French breakfast radish, radishes. What else? I think I'll seed arugula. Two rows of arugula down the middle of the tomatoes. And then I'll do one row of radish on each side. Um, yeah. Cool, thank you. Okay, Earthway Cedar time, the classic. So, okay, so let's see here. I've already got my radish plate in, so I'm gonna do the French breakfast. I like, my favorite radishes to grow are French breakfast and Easter eggs. I'd love to try watermelon, I haven't tried those yet. Okay, oh crap, I didn't. Yeah, Tater, I think that's a great idea. Interning or volunteering at a farm is really the best way to uh, level up your growing game. Um, other than having your own farm, there's nothing else that's gonna teach you more and more quickly. Okay. Let me just set it up. My plow depth is at um, an inch and a half, I think, or no, I mean, sorry, at a half inch, I mean. <clears throat> Most of my seating I do at half inch. All right, here we go. Gosh, almost killed that tomato. Right, radishes are in. Now let's just do the um, arugula. The arugula, I like to use the lettuce plate. I find that works perfect for the density for arugula. For set for a uh, for baby mix at least. I need to get a new tripod. This thing has had better days. 
Okay. So I'll, I'll get going fairly soon after finishing the seating, but if you guys have anything else you want to talk about or any other questions about what I did today or you want to look at something on the trellis or on my market garden in general, um, type it in and as soon as I'm done in two minutes here, we'll go check it out. Oh, I put the plate. Okay, so this is a little more tricky because, because I gotta go in the middle and then avoid the poles, but I'm gonna put two rows in and that should be um, really good. I think that's what I did last year and I was happy with that. Just gonna be careful around the tomatoes. And then this, I can't come in with my greens harvester. I have to uh, harvest by hand, but I got like five pounds per week for a few weeks um by doing this so hey you know it's like another hundred bucks so it's a great technique to get a little bit more money out of your beds or food if you're just homesteading or gardening wait a second what's going on here there it goes God. okay big problem the middle of the bed is really lopsided. I need to rake this. I didn't really set it up. Actually, you know what? There's almost time to even start training these. I could put my strings out, my tomahawks and stuff. Well, we'll see. Let's keep going. Try again here. Actually, you know, because it's so lumpy and um, it's a little bit lumpy and it's a little bit uneven, I'm going to put the plant. 